In this video, I'll show you how you can use My Ether Wallet version 5. I'll walk you through how to access your wallet, send and receive Ethereum, and how to exchange your crypto. This video is actually part two of a series of two videos. The first I created was how to create a new wallet and connect using New Connect. This is also an update to my original tutorial I created around my Ether Wallet a few years ago. I'm Louise Elizabeth and welcome to Every Bit Helps. I really hope you enjoyed this video today and if you do then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button and share if you feel that others may benefit. Also please check out my website at www.everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews and tutorials. My Ether Wallet is more like a portal to the Ethereum blockchain. Tokens and funds are not stored on My Ether Wallet like they would be on an exchange and you don't create an account. Because of this, they don't store any of your details on a server somewhere, which means it's more secure. On the flip side to this, it does mean that if you lose or if you forget any of your information, it will be gone. So let's jump into the walkthrough. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to myetherwallet.com. So when you put that into the address bar, do ensure that you put the exact address in as there are phishing sites around. And what can we do from this site? Well, the first thing we can do is either create a new wallet or access my wallet. I'm just gonna click on to create a new wallet. So if you're creating a wallet, the recommended way that you do so is via the app New Connect, which is a no hardware, hardware wallet, which keeps your private keys in a secure vault on your device. I've actually created a separate tutorial about how you connect and create new wallets. So please feel free to take a look at that if you're not familiar with creating new wallets or the app. However, once you have your wallet, you can then access it. So what I'm gonna do is click on to access my wallet. And there are different ways that you can access it. So you can connect via the likes of New Connect. So you can also connect via a hardware wallet, such as the likes of a Ledger Nano S or a Trezor. You can connect via the MetaMask Chrome extension, or which is currently not recommended anymore, is via the key store file or private key. Now back in the older versions of uh, My Ether Wallet, this was one of the main ways that you did access your account. However, it isn't very secure as obviously you are exposing things like your private keys or your key store file. So I'd really recommend using one of the other forms of access. The way that I'm gonna be connected today is via my Mu Connect app. So I'm just gonna click onto that. So I've opened up my app on my mobile phone and what I'm going to do is scan to connect. Scan the QR code. It will then create a local connection with my Ether wallet and provide me with access into my wallet. So the first thing we're presented with is our dashboard. So what do we see on here? Well, the first thing we can see is our public address. So this is the address that you can obviously share with others to uh, receive crypto into my Ether wallet. It'll also show your balance. So should you have a Ethereum balance within here, it will then show in this balance section. It also have quick links to things like sending transactions, swapping, and different types of token balances. Now, one of the great things about Mu is the fact that you can actually store ERC20 tokens. So if you are participating in any kinds of ICOs, then this is a great wallet to actually use in conjunction with that. But the first thing you may want to do is actually fund your account. So what you need to do is obviously share this public address that you have here. And the way that you can do that is if you click onto the address in QR code little icon here, you then have your public address. So with your public address, you can obviously copy that and you can then share that address. So you may have funds over an exchange that you then want to move across into my Ether wallet. As best security practices do state that you should not keep your funds over an exchange as obviously they are more likely to get hacked because they will have a lot more funds on there. Or if you have a mobile phone, you can scan that QR code to receive the funds into my Ether wallet. You also have the ability to print and simply to copy. Now, if you'd like to send Ethereum, what you need to do is you can either click on the quick link to send transaction here, or you can simply click on to send on the left-hand side. It will then ask you what type of a cryptocurrency you would actually like to send. So if you're sending Ethereum, obviously you can select that from the list. However, if you do have other token balances, then obviously they will appear in this list also. You then put in the amount that you would like to send, or you can simply click onto entire balance. 
Next up, you'll put in the address where you would like to send your transaction to. Now, one thing to be aware of is obviously anything in the cryptocurrency world is non-retractable. So if you do make a mistake in putting in that address in, you won't be able to get your funds back. So do ensure that when you are putting in these addresses into these sections, you are double checking maybe the first three digits, last three digits, a few digits in the center as well, just to double check everything you're doing is correct. So maybe you're sending across your transactions to the likes of Coinbase Pro for um, exchanging different types of cryptocurrencies or the likes of Binance. So what you wanna do is put in your address into this section. One other thing is that with cryptocurrency, you're always paying transaction fees. The great thing about Ethereum transactions is the fact that the actual cost is pretty low in compared to the likes of Bitcoin. However, you can actually edit and change this depending on how quickly you want your transaction to go through. So what I'm gonna do is click on to edit. And here, if I click on to transaction speed, you can see that I can change the speed and that will depend on the amount of transaction fee that I'm gonna be paying. So you can go for economy if you're not so bothered about your transaction going through too quickly and you'll be paying less in terms of your transaction fees. Or if you want your transaction to go through really fast and you're in a hurry, you can obviously change that to fast and then you simply click on to save. Then when you're ready, you can click on to send transaction. Now, when you do use the likes of a hardware wallet or MuConnect, what it'll do is actually prompt on your app or on your device, and it'll ask you to confirm that transaction. So it's just another great way that you can ensure that you are who you say you are, and you're actually sending this transaction and not someone else. And once you send any type of transactions, you can also view them in the transaction history, which is up in that top right hand corner here. And then if I click onto Etherscan, it will then come up with all the information in relation to this address. So it will provide me with transactions where I've sent them from and to, the value and the different types of transaction fees that I'm paying. But what I'll do is just head back over to my Ether wallet. I'm gonna to go to the dashboard. So within my Ether wallet, you can also exchange your different types of cryptocurrencies. And what they call it is they call it swap. So I'm gonna click onto swap on the left hand side here. So say for example, you've got some Ethereum and you wanna try out a different type of coin, you can do that all within the exchange. So what I could do from here is I can obviously select Ethereum and then I'd say I'd like to exchange it for and you can change all the different types of cryptocurrencies in here. And as you can see, there's a whole host of different types of, that are available. So I'm gonna select the basic attention token and then you put in the amount that you'd like to swap from and it will give you the conversion to. So say for example, you would like to swap to Ethereum. It will then provide you with the amount that you'll actually have within that basic attention token. You'd then put in the address where you would like to send the funds to. Now the likelihood is you're actually gonna be sending it to this address. So you, what you can do is from this little drop down beside to address, you can state you want to send it to my Ethereum address. Now, the reason why you might not use this address is say, for example, you are exchanging from Ethereum to Bitcoin. Obviously, Bitcoin is not supported within my Ether wallet. So what it asks you to do is supply a valid Bitcoin address. So you may have the likes of an Exodus wallet or something like that. So what you could do is just put in your Bitcoin address into this section here. Then, depending on the different type of cryptocurrency you're exchanging from and to, you'll be provided with different types of providers in this bottom hand section. And it will show you the exact amount of money that you will actually receive in Bitcoin here. So you'll wanna go for the one where obviously you will receive the most amount of Bitcoin. So what you can do is you can select from either one of those providers and then you'll simply click on to continue. Now again, very similar to when you are sending your different types of transactions, you will be asked to confirm it on your device in the likes of your Mew Connect or your hardware wallet. I'm just gonna take us back to our dashboard. Now previously in my Ether wallet, you did have the ability to view your tokens, but you did have to load tokens and it took absolutely ages for them to load. However, what you have now is, you have all the different types of tokens as well as any associated balance and they will appear in this token section. You can also add custom tokens to this section by entering in the token contract address, 
it will then provide you with the symbol and the decimals and you can simply click on to save. So what else can you do within My Ether Wallet? Well, you have a section here called Dapps. And from here, you can do different types of things. So you can name your wallet, you can schedule transactions, and you can register for an ENS domain. You can also interact with contracts and deploy contracts as well. One other thing to be aware of is that obviously when you are within your MyEther wallet, you do need to ensure that you do log out every single time you've stopped using your wallet. So the way that you do that is if you go across to the, your top right hand corner, click on the little drop down, you can then click on to log out. So that was a very brief overview of the new version five of MyEther wallet. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you do, then please give me a like. And if you'd like to see more tips, reviews and tutorials, then please head over to my website at www.everybithelps.co.uk or please hit subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you soon.